So there's this game called Q Remastered, and it's basically a puzzle game that supposedly tests your IQ. The way it works is simple. All you have to do is draw lines to solve puzzles like getting a ball out of the cup or launching Alex 10 meters into the air for some reason. It's a great game, but what can we add to make it even better? Let's dive into development and find out. The first thing we have to do is make the base game. It's actually not too complicated to get this drawing thing to work. All you have to do is follow the mouse, place spheres as it goes, and connect them with rectangles. Then when you're all done with the stroke, you can just combine everything into one rigid object and let it fall. And that's really all it is. Now we can draw letters and even do that lever trick we saw before. So now what should we add? My first thought was to add machine parts and other interesting mechanical things like pivots and motors and all that stuff. That could really expand the engineering creativity of the game. Imagine if the puzzle objective was like, build a car from scratch. Obviously you could see the problem with that. Unless you're like an advanced auto mechanic, no one's gonna be able to do that. So that was the end of that idea. So if we can't add machine parts, what if we add a human element to the game? By that I mean, what if we add a character and add platforming? I quickly mocked up a little stick figure guy to represent the character. I was planning on actually giving him like a backstory and personality and animations and all this stuff, but I was like, nah, fuck that, I don't need to do all that work. What if I just make him a ragdoll? Well, then you can't control him, so how about an active ragdoll? What's an active ragdoll, you may ask? It's a ragdoll that's active. Oh. With the right forces, you can basically get the arms and legs to pull and thrust just like real muscles. I don't know if you remember this old game Co-op, but I have a strong feeling that's how that one worked. <coughs> it's very, very flimsy and hard to control, but for some reason it's really fun. I whipped up a few tutorial puzzles which introduce all the basic elements, like this star as the exit, this blue area where you can't draw, or this red area which kills the player. I also added moving platforms which are controlled by buttons and pressure plates, and I was able to create a lot of interesting puzzles using them. I found this solid black background to be pretty boring to look at, so I went ahead trying to create a new one. I was playing around with this water shader that I made in another game, and I tried cranking up the distortion amount really high, and I accidentally created the goop shader from Mario Sunshine. Wow, that was lucky. I guess I'll just put that in the background. With all the basic elements in place, I got to work with creating the puzzles. I sketched them all out on paper first, but as I was doing this, I started to get bored. This pattern happens a lot in puzzle games, where I play for a little while, and then I kind of get the gist of it, and I'm not really interested in continuing. So that's when I got the idea, what if we had a story? Remember all that stuff I said before? I was planning on actually giving him like a backstory and personality and animations and all this stuff, but I was like, nah, fuck that. Well, fuck that. We're making a story. The story basically is about a breakup and how the main character Astro handles it by taking up the difficult challenge of crossing the galaxy. The story is told in the form of these little snippets of dialogue which appear every few levels. Now let's talk about the music. Since the visual style was starting to look kind of spacey, I also wanted to match that vibe auditorily. So I started with these really cool, flangy kind of chord things, and then whenever you hit the play button and you're actually trying to solve the puzzle, that's when the drums kick in. And then if you're headed towards the solution, the guitar comes in and celebrates. And now it's time for a play test. I sent it over to my friend Jake, Right away, I was really impressed by the solutions he was coming up with. They were all completely different from the ones that I intended. On this one, he just ran straight to the finish. All bad. I guess that's the thing. <laughs> this one, he solved the puzzle while dead. Go on. Oh no. Oh wow. <laughs> Chip shot. I mean, I oh. This one, he cheated the laws of physics. Oh, we made it. Oh. But there was one strategy which seems to break the game more than anything else. What if my rock was bigger and better? I got my rock bucket there. I got my extremely big rock. Big rock, big rock. Rock, rock, rocks. Rock, the rock, rock. The strongest rock in the world. Rock, rock, rock. Big rock, rock, rock. Pebble, rock, rock. All right, I'm inclined to believe that this E button moves this block, which I'm then supposed to hit this button, which opens the door. However, big rock. <laughs> there were several times when he just barely didn't make it. Get over there. Oh. Uh, uh, ooh, ow. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <Go. laughs> and sometimes when he did, I make it. Oh, oh. Next up for a play test was Brian. His solutions tend to be a little bit more, uh, let's say, direct. What, what, what's your thought process with this one? He'll make it. Well, it's gonna. Oh my god! Oh my god! It, oh my god. it Go 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 go! Get up! Get up! Get up! Brian, get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up. <laughs> 
By this point, we've been play testing for almost two and a half hours, so we started to get a little distracted. And I'm like, all right, what if I want Sour Patch Kids? I can just buy five pounds of it. <laughs> God forbid you want to buy a whole alligator. What the heck? <laughs> Why is it six thousand dollars for that? It's a technology. Man, it's just a fountain. Like, you see this cactus ass infrastructure you can have in your house? <laughs> what the fourteen thousand dollars? Oh no! What the f is this, dude? It's gold. Oh, what the hell? Well, I guess that's it for that play test and for the devlog. If you want to play it, the links are in the description. But before you go, I have a couple announcements. The first one is that I've consolidated all the discords that I've made into one. And the second announcement is that I've added keyboard support and Mac OS support to my previous game, Shortcut Racing. So that makes things quite a lot easier for all you guys. So enjoy that, and I'll see you in the next one.